In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two new products from ISDT. We have the Q6 Nano Smart Charger and also this one called the ISDT PD60 from URUAV. Now, this is a USB type C charger. Well, it takes a USB C input and can output up to a 4S here. So it's a 2 to 4S and it's an XT60. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the power ratings here because I never really achieved what it's stating. And I'll explain what I mean in a bit here. And the second one down the line is the Q6 Nano Smart Charger. Now, again, ISDT is like the spam of chargers here. However, this does have most of the features you would like, except a couple that I'd like to see in the upcoming future. Like, for example, maybe an XT30 converter. That's one thing. Also, some alligator clips to the the XT60 so you can put this on your car's battery so you can charge in the field. Those would be actually really useful stuff. And maybe even a USB output here. In order to charge your HD camera, for example, your GoPro, run cam, whatever you might be using, I think that would be very useful. So um, I really wish to see these things. We see these in, in much cheaper models, which are actually very useful. Like for example, I have this really old ISDT one, which I still use to this day to do just about everything. Yeah, we'll come back to that one later. So let's go ahead and start with the ISDT PD60. Now this is really great. It's it's very convenient to use just on your desk. I would not replace this with your typical charger for a couple reasons here. Now we can see that it's capable of charging LiPo, lithium high volt, life, nickel metal hydrite, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and six amps. However, I could not get it to pass 1.5 amps on two, three, and six, no matter what I did here. And the chargers, well, it could be due to my power adapter. Now this is, this is the one that comes with the Note 10 Plus, and this is the one that comes with the Note 9, and neither of them were able to surpass 1.5 volts. Even this one theoretically should output a ton more than this one. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it here, but I could not get it to pass 1.5 amps. However, if we talk about accuracy, it was pretty darn accurate actually. Uh, all my cells were 4.2 and some were 4.21. So it's slightly overcharging by 0.1 of a volt to make sure everything is set. So that's really nice to see. I've been charging these next to me and it works out really great. So whatever you use two, three and six, Mo I think more than likely it's just not going to bypass uh, 23 watts, which is uh, 1.5 amps here on 4S. I haven't tried anything lower because uh, I don't think anybody really is charging anything lower unless you're doing some kind of a micro setup. And this is why I would also uh, recommend it if they were to add an XT30 right here. That would have been so great to do that. It would have just been very, very useful here. Um, overall, I like the form factor, but it is kind of finicky. And and sometimes, you know, it, it gets stuck and you just got to unplug it and plug it back in, especially when you're changing batteries. Um, it doesn't always happen, but I don't expect the reliability to be very long, but I could also be wrong, but it is slightly finicky at times. And I say that because I have been using it for the past week now, uh, just about every day, about two batteries a day here. And uh, let's actually show it to you. For example, it charges. If, you, if it just doesn't want to charge, all you got to do is just unplug and plug that back in. And that, that's the only problem that I'm having at times. So it even gives you your battery voltage. So whatever I put up to six amps, it doesn't matter. It's just going to charge 1.5 amps. I was testing it all day today and, and with a bunch of different chargers. Out of the ones that I have, whether they're Chinese or the Samsung ones, uh, nothing ever bypassed 1.5 amps here. And uh, as you can tell right now, it's charging. You just press play and it just starts charging. You can see a little charging icon up here, which is really nice. You want to stop it, go ahead and stop it. Now, sometimes when you, like for example, let's see if I could show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So if you plug in just the XT60 by itself, this thing won't charge. It'll give you that error button. Now let's plug in the balance connector. And now I think it's going to just, uh, oh, and the way that it gives power is it gives power up to one amp, then it cuts it off and it brings it back up to uh, like 1.25 amps, cuts that off, comes back to 1.5 and it stays on 1.5. It does that within about uh, 15 seconds or so. So let's see if it charges. So right now it's charging. Um, I guess it was more finicky on this one because it was probably slightly less power and I used to see it flicker at times. So you need a pretty beefy uh, supercharger kind of, well not a supercharger, a fast charger uh, in order to run this. But right now actually uh, it's, it hasn't been finicky with this new charger because I just got this one. So this charger right here is max 9 volts, 1.6 amps or 5 volts, 2 amps. This one right here. That one over there is, I think, around 3 amps maximum, so it has more wattage output. But anyways, I could not get it to pass 1.5 amps on this one. But it, overall, it's really nice to have just on the desk. It charges very safely, um, which is really good. It doesn't heat up. It does get slightly warm, but it does have a very fat heat sink inside, 
Uh, you can kind of actually get to see that here. And the, you know, the, they've been doing this for quite a while. I mean, ICT better do something right. I mean, it, we see we do have a lot of holes right here in order to have it dissipate the heat much better with that heat sink. And, uh, but the overall thing is it's just plastic. This is not metal. And um, it's nice. You're not going to be able to parallel charge just maybe like, two, I don't know, like two um, XT30 micro batteries maybe because, again, it's 1.5 amp maximum. But other than that, if I mean, if, if it's useful, I mean, I can't say it's not useful. I've been using it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. I don't even know how much this one costs. It just arrived in the mail. But um, that's about it for this one. I like it. I mean, it just works most of the time. And if it doesn't, I just unplug and plug back in. And I'm guessing that's due to a low power output uh, brick here for our power adapter. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and jump into the Q6 Nano now. So now we're gonna take a look at the Q6 Nano and it's basically just about the same as every other uh, one they've released recently. However, this one's not touch, which is a nice sign. It doesn't come with a screen protector and these tend to scratch up really, really easily, especially with all that carbon fiber and tools you have in your bag. So try to take care of that part. It doesn't come with any other accessories. So yeah, that, that's about it here. So if we go into the menu here, it has the basic stuff. It also has the DC power and destroy options, which are really nice. DC power right here is uh, you could output whatever. It's basically a power supply. It's a power supply up to, I think, 30 volts, if I remember. Yep, 30 volts. And I think that's on 30 volts, it's just 5 amps, or is it always 5 amps? Let's go ahead and drop this down to 20 volts, see if we get more than 5 amps here. So it's really useful if you wanted to power up your quad real quick or something yeah five amps maximum up to 30 volts so you can choose how many volts you want and the amperage you want you could limit the amperage to one amp you know half an amp uh you can do what you need here so it's kind of like a it's kind of nice so yeah but one thing i really don't like about this is the button here it's really annoying because up and down and then when you go to press it down it has to press both the up and down in order to give you you know the enter command into whatever you're trying to do here and it, 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 it's, it works, I mean, but it, it kind of is kind of annoying, to be honest. Uh, not a deal breaker, but something to take into consideration. We have discharge storage and destroy here. We can just destroy the batteries. We have high volt, lipo, lithium ion, life, uh, uh, PB acid, oh, sorry, lead acid and nickel metal hydrate here. So you can choose whatever you want to destroy, uh, which means it'll make it into zero volts. So it's kind of uh, safe to throw away now. Now, also, if you wanted to enter the main menu on just the, the base or the home screen, you just want to keep holding down everything right there, which is the two buttons all together. And then you can set it with these settings up. For example, your lowest input voltage. So if you're charging from your car's battery, this could be useful. So you don't um, over discharge your car's battery and you can't turn it back on. So you can set the lowest voltage um, right here, which is very useful. Uh, max input power this is very it's pointless, really. Um, the backlight, the volume, the completion tone, so when something's complete. In the languages we have, uh, probably Japanese, Korean, and Chinese, I don't know. Uh, German, French, and Spanish. So, in English, obviously. We have self-test calibration. Now, speaking of the calibration, mine was, again, calibrated uh, plus or minus 0 0.01 of a volt. So... It was decent in that perspective. And again, what's really nice with this is you can also calibrate it yourself. So uh, if you needed to do that, it does have self calibration, which I haven't tested again. Now the discharge is around half an amp. It's no more than half an amp. I don't know what they're calling it does, but it's not going to discharge more than half an amp. And the maximum output when it's charging is eight amps. So keep that into consideration. So again, this is a nano. It's not supposed to be uh, very big, but it is uh, slightly bulky as you can tell compared to this one. But again, it handles more current here and uh, it does have a really nice fan inside that kicks in when uh, when you need it. And it's pretty loud actually. So overall, um, that's gonna include it for my video overview of these two chargers and uh, everything's linked down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.